Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come where there will not be left one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be that all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you not be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first. But, they, it, will not be, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place. And awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however... They will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to the prisons. And they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to you giving testimony. Remember you are not to prepare your defense beforehand. For I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all your, advers that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives and friends. And they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name. Not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The end of the world. One would have thought the end of the world happened Wednesday morning. I am amazed at the hysteria that has gripped the country over a presidential election. And this all started with Ronald Reagan. I don't know what it was with the, with the Reagan era, but this all, uh, suddenly when Ronald Reagan became president, politics just got really nasty. And ever since then, the, what, the ever, whoever the losing side was treated the election like it was the end of the world. I assure you it isn't. We survived Reagan, two Bushes, a Clinton, and an Obama. Take a deep breath and relax. Whatever happens down the road, we will deal with it as we always have, like Americans. We will endure. It is not the end. But about 20 years ago, I remember two movies that I saw made within a few months of each other in which humanity did face complete destruction. In each of these movies, asteroids as large as those that destroyed the dinosaurs were on a collision course with Earth. But each movie handled the subject very differently. One of the movies, Armageddon, focused on a ragtag band of heroes who blast off into space to destroy an asteroid the size of Texas with a nuclear bomb. The movie was basically a Bruce Willis edge of your seat action flick. The other movie, Deep Impact, was noted not so much for its heroes to the rescue scenes, but rather its quiet thoughtfulness. How would we deal with the knowledge that we would all be dead in a year? One, in one scene, the President of the United States, played by Morgan Friedman, tells the nations that an asteroid is headed for Earth, which will in all probability destroy most of the life on the planet. He promises that everything is being done to save the planet, but in the meantime, he urges everybody to go on with life. People should still go to work. People should still go to school. People should still pay their taxes. Everyone should go on with life as if nothing was wrong. Because our task is to live. The end. It's a question that we always keep tucked in the back of our heads. And every now and then, we think about it. When will it end? How will it end? We pray for it every time we say the Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The end. And in the month of November, the church considers this question as well. We begin the month with a feast of all saints and all souls, feasts that remind us that we too will have an end. As we near the end of ordinary time, as we near the end of the liturgical year, as the days get shorter, the readings in the lectionary turn to the end. At the beginning of St. Paul's ministry, as well as the ministry of the other apostles, they all thought they were going to live to see the second coming of Christ. As Jesus was ascending into heaven, last thing he said to them was, I will be returning soon. Nobody ever stopped to consider that soon in God's terms and soon in our terms were two different things. After all, Scripture says with God that a thousand years is as a single day, and a single day is as a thousand years. 
So all of St. Paul's earliest letters have the same underlying theme. Get yourselves ready. Christ is coming again soon. Repent of your sins. Be patient under persecution. It won't be long. Soon Jesus is coming to get us. Then in St. Paul's later letters, particularly his letter to the Romans, his last major letter, Paul's tone shifts. Toward the end of his life, Paul has pretty much figured out that the second coming was not going to happen in his lifetime. So in his later letters, Paul's theme is not the end, but the continuation of the church and faithfulness to its teaching. But in this letter we have to the Thessalonians today, Paul is dealing with the end. And St. Paul is having the same problem that the president had in the movie Deep Impact. That is, trying to convince everybody to go on with life. The Thessalonians deeply believed that the second coming was close at hand. The reaction to this was to quit their jobs and abandon their responsibilities, the mentality being, why bother with all this stuff if we're not going to be here for long? St. Paul urges them, though, to go on quietly with life and don't support those who won't earn their keep. St. Paul reminds them and us that faithful Christians fulfill their responsibilities to God and their neighbor. And all of the readings today urge us to face the day of the Lord. Next week we'll celebrate the Feast of Christ the King, the last Sunday in ordinary time, before we begin the season of Advent. Next week we'll celebrate the day of the Lord, the day when Christ will come to pronounce justice, the judgment, justice on the just, punishment on the unjust, and when he'll reign as king over all creation forever. And today reminds us to take that day seriously and ask ourselves, how would I live? If I knew my time was limited. And it's actually a trick question. Because our time is limited. We are all going to die. Whether we're alive to see the second coming of Christ. Or whether we die naturally. Someday we will all be faced with the day of the Lord. Now initially in scriptures. The day of the Lord was looked forward to. As a day when God would come back to destroy our enemies. It was a day of great rejoicing. But by the time the prophet Malachi. The prophet in our first reading. The day of the Lord has taken on a new meaning. By the time of the prophet Malachi, the day of the Lord was not only the day that God was come to destroy our enemies, it was also the day that God would punish those who had not stayed faithful to the covenant and reward those who had. The book of Malachi was written after the Babylonian exile, sometime after the temple had been rebuilt. And Malachi was scandalized that nobody seemed to be taking the faith seriously anymore. Or their obligation to worship the temple anymore. Earlier in his book, Malachi blasted the priests for settling then less than the best animals for sacrifice. He blasted the people for their failure to tithe and support the temple. Jews were expected to give 10% of their gross annual earnings every year to support the temple. That's tithing. And the Jewish people still do it, as do many Protestant churches. So in this passage today, Malachi is warning the people... You better straighten out, because someday you're going to face the day of the Lord. Jesus also made allusions to this day in the gospel we heard today. Luke tells us how people were admiring the beauty of the temple, and Jesus says, A day will come when one stone will not be left on another, but it will all be torn down. Jesus is referring to the day of the Lord. Then Jesus goes into a discourse of all the sufferings that people who are faithful to him would have to endure before the day of the Lord. And the last line of this gospel is a good line for us to take with us today. By patient endurance, you will save your lives. People are worried about terrorism, don't be. Jesus said 2,000 years ago, Do not be disturbed when you hear of wars and insurrections. Nation will rise against nations. People are disturbed about global warming, national, natural disasters happening around the world. Don't be. Earthquakes, plagues, and famines will happen. Jesus said they must come before the day of the Lord. Some people are disturbed by all private revelations and alleged apparitions and all the supernatural phenomena that accompany them. Don't be. And the skies will be fear, fearful omens and great signs. Finally, Jesus said, they will manhandle and persecute you. You'll be delivered up even by your parents, brothers, relatives, and friends. And some of them will put you to death. Nina Shea, for years, was a, po a Christian political activist in Washington, D.C. In her book, In the Lion's Den, she reported that more Christians had died for their faith in the 20th century than in the previous 19 centuries combined. Christians are still being killed for their faith in Muslim countries around the world right now. 
Jesus predicted all of these things would occur before the day of the Lord. And they've been happening for the past 2,000 years. By patient endurance, you will save your lives. That is really the only good way to handle the end. Not running here or there trying to figure out when it's going to come. Not by adopting an eat, drink, and be merry attitude for tomorrow we die. Not by ignoring it and saying, well, it's never going to happen to me. By patient endurance, you will save your lives. Work as if everything depended on you. And pray as if everything depended on God. Good advice and a good way to always be prepared for the day of the Lord. And blessed be God forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.